Guys, it is officially Summer League season, and we do have a two-game slate posted. Uh, it's going to be a late one on Thursday night. We have a 10 p.m. game and then a midnight game. Uh, but then there's a pretty decent size slate on Friday, and I'm guessing they're going to have much bigger contest size for that. But for this video, again, we'll be talking about the two-game slate, try to break it down the best way I can. Um, but before we get into the, the whole breakdown, um, if you guys weren't with me last Summer League or previous few Summer Leagues, the Summer League for me personally has been the most profitable um, sport for me. So uh, yeah, I, I'm loving it. Uh, again, Summer League is literally, it's chaotic uh, because, you know, news, sometimes we don't get starting lineups until like a minute or two before lock. Sometimes we don't get them. You have to guess if, you know, some guys are going to play or not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very, very hectic, uh, but I love it. Again, a big edge because there's not a lot of information out there. And basically... Uh, for the next 10 days, for however long Summer League is, will be going on for, I will be locked away in my apartment, literally just looking for any single piece of news I can find. I'll be posting it on Patreon. If you were a member of Patreon last year, you know we got a ton of updates. So, um, Also, I'm doing a giveaway here for, for the Summer League. So all I'd like to do is retweet this tweet to be entered. $50 Venmo. I'll be giving away that tomorrow. But here's just a few screenshots of um some of the winners from last year so this one is my favorite because uh even airborne trey he was a member he just didn't have his uh, logo switched but basically we were on the top of the leaderboard like every single slate um literally all members at the top of this slate uh that took it down um let's see let's go through a couple more of these this was high stakes stuff i took it down as well as do um outcast in there as well um few other just um really nice posts uh from people d walk said um joined patreon a month ago started with a hundred dollars in his DraftKings account he had over two thousand dollars and twenty dollars in his price fix account um so he had a he had a great great summer league uh, outcast who did two days after joining he's made uh, over three thousand dollars um yeah like, like i said it was uh, a phenomenal phenomenal summer league here's a few more like I said, first place, all at the top, all uh, Patreon members. So um, another picture of, again, Patreon members just all at the top of the board. Uh, let's see. A few other big winners in here. We'll scroll through this really quick. Um, but, yeah, these were all Patreon members last year. Um, what, turning $100 into over 1000 Can't beat a nice 10x. Uh, he joined Patreon and had his highest finish ever. Again, there, it was uh, Matt, I think this was the first day, if I remember, took $40 and like $1,500 on his birthday. So, um, yeah, hoping to run this back, guys. But, again, if you're interested uh, in signing up for the Patreon, it will be linked down below. Like I said, I'll be posting every single update that I see. I'll be doing live streams. I'll have player pools, be having the Discord answering questions. So, um, check that out if you're interested. Patreon linked down below. But... Yeah, guys, so let's talk about this two-game slate. Again, I already have a decent amount of stuff posted there to Patreon already uh, just for, you know, projected starting lineups and stuff like that. But um, let's talk about this. So uh, pricing is actually relatively tight on the slate if you're just looking at, you know, teams and, you know, the good players and all that. Um, it is, you know, going to be a little bit tougher to build out a lineup. But I think that that makes it better. I think uh, uh, I prefer it that way instead of, like, you know, having, for example, Paulo Banchero, the min price, like, no, nah, that, that wouldn't be fun. So um, let's start it off with uh, the Houston-Orlando game. And I apologize, too, if I mispronounce a couple of the rookies' names. Um, will probably take me a little bit to, to get down. But, um, yeah, we'll start it off with uh, Houston. And at the top, no surprise here, Jabari Smith. Uh, 9.1K does have small forward, power forward eligibility. Um, expect him to be utilized a ton. Um, I think they could even at times utilize him as a small ball five. I read an article where um, it said, you know, Garuba most likely starts at the five, but maybe, you know, you get a little bit of Smith at the five as well. So if you have the salary, I think he makes for a good spend up. Um, you also have uh, Tari Eason, who was picked uh, 17th, I think is a viable option as well. But I think if I would spend up, I'd rather go to Jabari Smith. I, I think he's going to have a little bit of a higher floor uh, than Eason at, at a similar price point. Um, we have Ty Ty Washington here. That is 7.6 K. Um, right now it's probably a pass. Me. I think it's a little bit pricey. Um, there's some rumors about, you know, what the starting lineup would be right now. It, it might, it's looking like it might be Deshaun Nix, uh, Deshaun Nix that picks up the start. Uh, if Ty, Ty, Ty Washington comes with a bench, 
that's probably uh, too expensive a price point. Usman Garuba, uh, projected to be the starting center. Um, again, didn't get a ton of run last summer league. That's because uh, the GOAT, Sengun, uh, dominated. But um, he um, project him to start. Again, there's not guaranteed. Uh, we won't know that for, for another couple days. But um, if he does, in fact, start 7K, I think he's a fair option. You know, decent rebounder. Um, and uh, I think this is one game where Mason Goon sat out. They actually have the stats from last summer league, which I thought was interesting, but, um, yeah, Garuba definitely a viable option. Christopher at 6'8 is, is probably the guy that stands the most to me though. Um, he arguably, um, outperformed, um, he was arguably one of the, the better players for Houston, uh, last year. Um, a couple bad shooting games there. He shot 4 of 18, 7 of 19, but here's the thing with Josh Christopher is he's going to chuck the ball. And he actually had the ball in his hands a lot last year as well. You know, five assists, seven assists, four assists. So at a 6.8K price point, also at the shooting guard spot where he'll probably be doing a decent chunk of the ball handling as well. I think he definitely stands out as a good option. Again, Knicks uh, could be the starting uh, point guard. Um, I think if he does pick the start, it would be a fair play there. Probably would lean Christopher over him. But um, if Knicks picks the start, I have no issue going there. Um, Anthony Lamb, we know it's kind of bounced around the Houston organization. Um, feels a little bit pricey though, uh, because I think there's a pretty good chance he's going to come off the bench. And I don't think I want to pay that price point for him. Um, other options, we have uh, Aaron Gordon, who I believe is Eric Gordon's brother. Um, he's the flat minimum price. You know, expect him to be a part of the rotation. So a little bit of interest there. Um, if Garuba does pick up a start, I would think Holman would be the backup uh, big because if you just look at the roster, there's actually Houston doesn't have a lot of bigs, right? We have Garuba um, and Holman. And then, like I said, Jabari Smith, probably a guy that will be playing uh, some small ball five. But it may be a little bit interesting, a guy like Eric Holman um, there at 4.5K. But let's move on to Orlando now. So Orlando, we have at the top in Chero. Um yeah, I mean, I think he Santos is one of the best spend-ups just because he's a guy that can stuff a stat sheet. Again, probably going to be heavily utilized here. Um, so I have no issue going to Banchero. I think he's one of the best spend-ups. And interestingly enough, uh, RJ Hampton said uh, he wanted to play in the Summer League um, because Orlando was, was, wasn't going to play it, but he said he insisted he wanted to play. So um, expect RJ Hampton to be heavily involved, you know, maybe a one-two punch for him and Banchero. You have the rookie Caleb Houston from, Michi from Michigan. Um, you know, probably not my favorite spend. My issue here is he's a little bit scoring dependent, and I don't know if I want to pay that salary for him. So it feels a little bit pricey there. If you scroll down a bit more, um, there are some interesting options here for Orlando because, you know, in the front court, you know, maybe at the five, I'm not exactly sure who's going to pick the start. Like, pretty sure Banchero um, will we'll start at the four. Um, or is it Banchero? I'm pretty sure it's Banchero. Bancaro? I, th I actually think it's Banchero. But I could be, I, that could be wrong, like I said. Um, I don't really follow college basketball much, um, but um, if you scroll down a little bit more, um, there are some interesting options here. Admiral Schofield uh, has kind of been the end of the bench for uh, a few years now in the NBA. He's 6.2K. They have him listed as a point guard shooting guard, even though it's more of like a wing slash big. Xavier Simpson, if you played uh, the end of the year for OKC uh, in the NBA DFS last year, uh, you know Xavier Simpson was a guy playing like 45 minutes in the last like three or four games. Um, I think he's uh, an okay option there, but um, you know, if, if they start Hampton at the one, then Simpson will most likely come off the bench. Uh, I guess they could technically start Simpson at the one and, and Archer Hampton at the two. Again, we don't have any confirmation yet in the starting lineup here for Orlando, but uh, the interesting situation here is there's some cheap bigs that I think look viable here. So Daniel Oturo was on uh, the Clippers summer league team last year. He's a guy that's a good rebounder, good shot blocker. Like look at his stats in the summer league last year. Uh, basically like averaging close to double double 12 and 10 11 and 13 8 and 8 12 and 8 you know if you look at the extra like like the blocks always had four blocks five blocks two blocks and a steal so a two intrigues me i think there's a chance he could pick up the start also emmanuel terry was on the king summer league team uh last year and he was solid in his run like he didn't get a ton of run really until i think that last game i think that was a championship game against boston we had a really good game, nine points, 15 boards, and five steals. But another good point per minute guy that is relatively cheap. So uh, I think there's some interesting options here for the Magic uh, at the forward slash center position. Um, but yeah, so let's move on to Portland and Detroit. So on the Portland side, uh, you'll recognize a lot of these names because a lot of these guys uh, played for Portland down the stretch. But we have the rookie, um, Shaden Sharp here, 8.9K. Again, I, I think it's totally in play. 
Um, but uh, there's some mystery around him, obviously, because um, he was ba- he was injured for a while, and we haven't got to see a lot of action from from him. But um, definitely playable at the top. Again, like I said, DraftKings did a pretty good job pricing um, you know the rookies. They they priced them at the very very top. But there are some interesting plays here for, for Portland here. Keon Johnson had a few good games down the stretch. I would guess he's going to start at the wing. I think he makes fair fair option here. Um, Watford and Greg Brown, I would guess, start in the front court. We know both guys are pretty solid point per minute guys. Uh, both have small forward eligibility, which is interesting because both are like centers slash fours. So I think both Greg Brown and Watford look pretty good for the price points. Didi uh, Luzada. I think we'll be in the rotation, 6.7K. Um, viable, but probably some other options I'd rather look to. Like Brandon Williams is 6'4". We know uh, he was a guy that uh, played a lot for Portland down the stretch uh, at the point guard position. And I would, um, I would guess he starts at the point guard position. So um, I think he makes a pretty good option there. Um, on the cheap end, there's one guy I'll mention here, a little revenge game narrative here for Luca Garza. Now, don't think he's going to start. However, you know, you saw what Garza could do in limited run for the Pistons last year, right? They kind of eased him into it, 13 minutes, 15 fancy points, 16 minutes, 20 fancy points. But when they kind of unleashed him, when the Pistons rested a few guys last few games, 25 minutes, 40 fancy points, 26 minutes, 46 fancy points, 27 minutes, 44 fancy points. So, revenge game narrative. The only downside here is I don't think he starts. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Watford and Greg Brown that start in the front court. but. Um, even if Garza plays like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes on the bench, I still think he'd be a viable option here at only 5K. So definitely an intriguing option there. Um, but um, yeah, I think that's probably it. Kyle Alexander also uh, played last year. I forget what team he played for in the Summer League. I actually I think it was the Suns. I'm pretty sure the Suns had like three Alexanders. Uh, but another guy that's not a bad point for me, a guy the flat minimum price, you could also get some backup runs. So um, a couple, you know, interesting viable uh, value options here for Portland. And finally, Detroit. So Detroit's the big question mark here because they have like 30 guys in their summer league team. Like I have no idea what Detroit's doing right now. Um, and I would guess that, you know, some of the main guys, if they're going to play, probably only play a game or two. Like if Kate Cunningham, Sadiq Bey, Isaiah Stewart, um, Killing Hayes, I would guess if these guys even do play, they probably only play in the first game or two and that's it. Um, so. The tricky part here about the Pistons is this roster is just loaded right now. So assuming that everyone plays, it's really tough to feel good about a lot of these guys just because they have such a good roster, right? Like I would guess the starting lineup if everyone plays would probably be something like Cade and Ivy in the backcourt, um, you know, Sadiq Bay on the wing, Isaiah Stewart in the front court, maybe Braxton Lee in there as well, like Killing Hayes, Saban Lee, Isaiah Livers off the bench. Like a lot of these guys were rotation players for the Pistons last year. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a super talented team. Like I said, I think there's a chance though, that the main guys might not play or maybe only play a a game or two. So we'll get more information on that as we get closer to lock here. And like I said, I'll be posting every update I get over on patreon.com. So make sure to check that out if you're interested in making some money here for some really DFS, but looking at players and their price points, uh, you have K nine, eight Sadiq, uh, nine, three Ivy's at nine K uh duran is 8.8k hayes is 8.4 like i said a lot of guys are super super expensive so you know if i'm going to spend up for for one of these guys in the pistons it probably would be Cade cunningham um maybe a Jalen duran uh but like i said it, it's tough to feel confident right now assume that everyone plays just because they have such a loaded roster like even isaiah stewart at 7.4 is not super cheap but if he starts in the front court i think he's a pretty good play um, you know, a couple of cheaper options, you know, a guy like Saban Lee, who, you know, is a good point for a guy when he got minutes, um, for the Pistons last year, he averaged about 25 minutes in the summer league, uh, was what average, like what, 27 fancy points. So 5.1 K, I think he could be used from salary relief. Isaiah Livers did not play in the summer league last year, but he was a guy getting some minutes to the Pistons down the stretch, a wing that I think is a fair value option. So, um, yeah, right now the Pistons, I think, are my least favorite team to target just because of the price points. However, we could get news that maybe they rest all their main guys. And maybe we only see like Ivy and, and Duran, the rookies, and you know, maybe like Saban Lee. And that and if that's the case, then the Pistons are gonna lo- look a lot more interesting. And then some of these value plays are also gonna look a lot more interesting. But assuming everyone plays, like I said, it's gonna be a little bit tricky to uh feel really good about anyone on the Pistons because of the price points and because of how loaded this roster is. But yeah, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the video. So like I said, I cannot wait for Summer League to start. Uh, we actually had a couple pre-Summer League games going on. 
Uh, but the, the real summer league starts here on Thursday night. So, um, like I said, that'll do it for the video. If you guys do enjoy, just make sure to like, uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Like I said, enter the giveaway. Um, all you have to do is retweet this tweet to be entered. $50 Venmo. And again, Patreon, if you are interested, that'll be linked in the description below. If you have any questions, you can always, uh, you know, message me over there on Patreon. But um, that'll wrap it up for the video, guys. All of YouTube videos for uh, general breakdowns like this for uh, the entire Summer League. Again, if you want more in-depth content, all of those, you know, updates, starting lineups, posts, roster construction videos, player pools, a lot more content we have over on Patreon. Check it out. But um, thanks again, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night, and I'll see you all in the next video.